All right, this is the patient reference frame. It sits on this bumpable frame. So you can see, I don't know if you can see these teeth right here, but once this is set, there's like a spring-loaded device. And you wanna make sure that when you do the spin, those teeth are pro properly aligned because what can happen is it could be perched up like that and we may not realize it and then a tiny little touch will let it click into place and if you don't appreciate that change, you'll get a navigation image that's slightly off and at some point during the surgery with very minimal touching of this, it will pop back into place. Get up really close now, make a new video. Here's the teeth. Here's how it's gonna be perched up. So when I put this in, I put a little mark here to make sure that I know it hasn't moved during surgery. It doesn't usually move like this. I usually worry that it moves like this to this. This is the patient reference pin. This one's in the posterior superior iliac spine, which is the pelvis. It's vitally important that this is in a really good bone. And when you wiggle it around, you can just tell it's rock solid. Then you put the navigation flight on the patient reference pin. Again, you make sure everything's all lined up. And finally, that this bumpable component of it is in the right spot. So when I find the right configuration, marking pen, I look to make sure it's all clicked together and make sure it's stable. And then I mark it so that if any time during the case it's changed, I'll be able to tell. And that's the first step of making sure your navigation system is working properly. Rolling. All right, we have the navigation tracking pin in. We've made sure that it's engaged, not perched up in some weird position. And it's in the original spot based on my markings. And it's on a stable stem inside the iliac crest. This is one of many instruments that navigate the instrument. So the first thing I do is I make sure and reconfirm that the integrity of the navigation system is working. So that means that the relationship between this and this relative to this should be within one to two millimeters. And it'll beep. That was that beep. It says it's the, the relationship between the 3D spacing of all the navigation instruments is intact. All right, so the second step is probably even more important than that because just uh, even though this and this is calibrated, we have to make sure that the relationship between the spine that we're operating on and where this pin is, which is not in the spine, it's in the iliac crest, that relationship hasn't changed. And this is where we do the intraoperative confirmation. And so I want to basically either visualize a bony anatomic structure that I know of, or feel around and confirm that everything that I feel is exactly what I would expect up there. If there's anything off with that, then I'll stop. So the first thing that I do is I find the transverse process. I feel it. I, so, I, so the first thing that I do is I go down to the transverse process right here. And if what I feel as I walk around is not exactly what's on the navigation system, I know that there's a problem between the anatomic position and the position of the patient reference frame. It's changed. Right now it's behaving perfectly because I can walk up the lateral aspect of the superior process, get down to the sulcus, walk out laterally, and then I can go inferior and feel myself fall off, and superior and feel myself fall off. Furthermore, if I had a retractor down there and I exposed the facet joint, I could visually double check uh, the bone location and what appears on the navigation screen. All those steps are called the internal validation step. It confirms that the relationship between the spine and the patient reference frame has not moved and intermittently I'll also confirm the calibration that the integrity of the navigation system is intact. 